Okay, we're back and we're answering your questions again. This first one comes to us from Matty Ice SR, who would like to know. Hello, gentlemen. We are gentle. We That's are. That's true. How do you feel about Cody's title reign so far? It feels solid to me, but I feel like he needs to escape the bloodline for a while before it just gets too stale. I disagree on the stale comment. I think he's doing a great job. Um, and, you know, there was the danger once it was like not the big Co Cody versus Roman stuff that he kind of would lose it a little bit. You know, he had a brilliant match with AJ Styles and everyone knew who was going to win that match. Um, I'm really enjoying it, obviously. Um, and I've got some bad news if you think he's going to move away from the Bloodline stuff. I think he is going to factor in, I would assume, to War Games one way or another. I th I'd like to see him in that. I'm do I'm in my head I'm booking a five on five for war games. We've talked about this quite a lot recently. And long term, um he's facing the rock at WrestleMania. So yeah, I mean the interim you could have some fun different matches for him at say the Rumble or whatever, but yeah, it's only going one way for me in the next few months for Cody and uh, the Bloodline. Yeah, this is the thing. He's definitely facing the Rock at WrestleMania. So I think if you find the Bloodline stuff a little bit stale, which is fair, it's your take, uh, you're going to have a hard few months, <laughs> I think. Um, I am still very much into it. I think the danger with a babyface world champion in any company is that the chase is often more compelling than the actual reign. Um, that Cody had an incredible chase. So it's like, how do you better yeah. that with the title reign? And while I don't necessarily think they've bettered it, um, I think it has been good yeah. across the board. Look, Cody Rhodes had a good match with Solo Sokoa. That's about for to make sake. How can that man be stale? Um, I think it, it, I'm still into the bloodline stuff. Yes. They haven't even scratched the surface of what they can do with Jacob Fatu yet. No. Um, they haven't even, uh, they've barely just began the whole union of these dudes together under Solo. And I think Cody existing in that space has actually been pretty healthy. You know what it does? Him being involved in this storyline as well saves him from just having this, you mentioned the AJ storyline, really good matches, you knew what the outcome was gonna be. Mm -hmm. It saves him from having like four or five of those placeholder filler feuds yes. before you get to Rock or whoever at WrestleMania. Uh, you just run through people who don't really deserve title feuds mm -hmm. just to keep him busy. I think this is a really good way to keep him busy. It's in WWE's biggest storyline of the past, what, 20 years? Yeah. It's good. I like it. I'm still into it. And off the top of your head, you could easily book matches between now and WrestleMania for Cody that stay interesting. I know it's Saudi, but you're getting Cody versus Gunther coming up. I know that's not for the title, but it is what it is. Then War Games. Then maybe Roman uh, uh, mm. uh, Saturday night's main event to close out the year. Who knows? There's a mm. lot of suggestion that you could still do that match on the road to WrestleMania. And after that, well, you've only got Kevin Owens, who's just beat the crap out of him, uh, to still do. And... That Randy Orton match is, is crying out, and then you're basically at WrestleMania running through those matches. So yeah. I think you'll be absolutely fine. The Cold Man, I don't think you've seen the Cody verse anytime no. soon, put it that way. And then he <laughs> drops the title to The Rock at WrestleMania, who then uh, what, just leaves and goes back to Hollywood. Hey, and then you can uh, freshen the Cody act up by bringing Brandy in full time. So why exactly. not? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, right, let's move on. Thank you to Tom Petty17 on X, who gives us our next question. Why, Andy, is the AEW audience? Frittering away. Frittering away. Yeah, it's interesting to to look at the, the the ratings chart. You expect a natural decline every year by like a certain amount, just as a consequence of like TV viewerships yeah. declining as a whole. But AWS is ahead of that now. It's kind of like what WWE was like in like 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite interesting. I saw a little graph somebody put up the other the other week, uh, and it was. Uh, you know, just over the past couple of years, AEW's graph, and it was very slowly going down, very slowly mm -hmm. going down. And it gets to the point on the date chart where they started the devil storyline and then it starts oh, going like this. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to blame the devil because he's gone. Um, but, you know, the, I think there's a lot to say for, like, the promotion of live events and stuff like that. Like, how do you have a... How, how is it possible to have a show that only has 1,800 people there? Yeah. Like, the, that should prompt some kind of business inquisition. And inquisition? Inquest. It's not that serious. No one is ready for the business inquisition. <laughs> yeah. So, but, like, we're not... You know, we're not um, Brandon Burstyn. We're not, like super knowledgeable no. on the wider aspects of the business side. We just can analyze what's in front of us. I think on a creative side, I sit down to what, and I like, I have always say this just to clarify before people go, yeah, hate AEW. I like AEW more than I like the WWE product, right? It's my taste. But I sit down and I watch that show and I can't really invest in anyone because I'm not really certain there's a plan for everyone on that yeah. show. Like I can sit down and look at Swerve and see the plan for him, clearly. Hangman, um, 
There's a few others as well who have clear long-term directions, and that's good. But if I sit down and I watch Konoski Takeshita, for example, one week, he's chasing Okada and skating Okada away and going for Okada's belt, suddenly we just drop that. Yeah. And oh, now he's fighting for the international instead. And look, that, that'll be a good match at Wrestle Dream. I'm not complaining about the quality, but you've just shuttered that thing and moved on to the next thing with no explanation. Chris Stalander and Stokely Hathaway, they had an oh. explanation on Rampage, but it was a crap one. And you had this promising... They were really good together. Yeah, they were great. Really good. I think that is a top of the division level act, Stokely and, and, and Chris. And they just ended it because according to Sean Ross Sapp, the, the, the creative team didn't have a story. Uh, what are we doing here? There's like 20 writers in this. <laughs> yeah. How, write something. Do your Just write a story. It's not hard. So like they keep, they keep ending cool things just as they're starting. This has been a problem for a couple of years now. I, as a fan, need to be able, if the Butcher shows up on Dynamite and enters a program with Darby Allen, for example, I need to know that that's going to be paid off yeah. in three months. I don't have that confidence right now. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no, I think there's no single answer to this, a bit like saying, how do you fix AEW? Uh, and there is the temptation to look back with sort of rose-tinted glasses, the early days of AEW when everyone's new and every match is the first time you're going to see it and what have you. But also, in the defense of, you know, early AEW, you, you had Cody even himself talking about it, saying we've basically got like two years of booking planned. And I just, like you say, I think with the amount of content they have to produce, and I get why they've, they've taken on the extra TV shows, because that's more that's more money. And if the, the TV networks say, we need more TV from you, you're not going to say no at yeah. the end of the day. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the addition of like ROH and then that, the hugely bloated roster, like you say, and the, the week to week booking, I think, is is a is a problem. Like you say, you want to know that, and it's they have this. I mean, I suppose all in, all out, uh, double or nothing. Well, how do you want to picture it with like if it was WWE after WrestleMania, you go right. What are we doing at next year's WrestleMania? I don't see that necessarily happening with AEW. Of like, right by uh, May of next year, double or nothing or whatever. What are we doing on that show? Who we who we putting the title on, and how are we getting them there? Yeah. Like there is storylines that is clearly long term, like Hangman Pages, fingers crossed, redemption arc, all that sort of thing. But yeah, I think I think the audience comes back somewhat, hopefully, when they do things like the C two again, because yeah. that was that was great last year. Uh, 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 yeah, last year. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at people like the Beast Mortos. Uh, oh, we, I we like love. to. But like, what's his what's his plan other than showing up and having good matches? You know, which is good. Like, look, I like good matches. He's Don't now managed by Jake the Snake. Yeah, okay. Frank, <laughs> Frank Mortos as managed by <laughs> Jake the Snake. Um, so yeah, like, and I hope all of that stuff goes somewhere. I really do, but I just don't believe it will because so many things have been started and then stopped for no reason. And I think that erodes your audience's trust. And I think that is one of the number one reasons behind the decline. I do have high hope. High hopes, nevertheless, for when MJF returns. Obviously, love MJF, but also for the Hurt Syndicate. I think they yeah. could do do big things. A bunch of people I really love: Sheldon yeah. Benjamin, MVP, Bob Lashley, my favorite guy. It's gonna be fun. Kick his ass, Bob. Let's go. All right, let's uh, talk about Mark Smith. We'll not talk about him. He's just asked us a question. Okay. Sorry, he Mark. Regularly does. Thank yeah. you, Mark. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. We're not gonna pick apart your name or anything like that. Oh, it's a good name. Solid. And <laughs> um, he would like to know with Shane McMahon and Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Potentially debuting for AEW at Wrestle Dream. Could this be the wackiest pair of debuts on a single show? If not, who? I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty wacky. It is wild, <laughs> isn't it, that we could get Shane and Big Bob, two shoot fighters, two MMA <laughs> legends, uh, coming in. One Bobby Lashley, I believe. Like so. it is. It is mad that we had a night where back to back you had Adam Cole and Brian Danielson yeah. showing up. Like. Literally back to back. That was fantastic. I yeah. can't think of like the word wacky doesn't accurately cover that. I'd say in terms of wacky, uh, I do remember when Andrade showed up with Vicky Guerrero, <laughs> yeah. and I thought, what's going on here? Yeah, that was that was silly, um, and it didn't work long no. term either. And trying to have a green suit on that night, I don't maybe that yeah, of, like a nice a nice emerald grey, yeah, good looking guy. Um, I mean, by default, right, the, the wackiest returns or debuts or whatever is the gimmick battle royal at WrestleMania 17, mm. isn't it? All the favourites were there. The Iron Sheik at Office Favourite, The Goon, was there. Uh, you can't really beat that strange cast of characters in there, but Danielson and Cole, one after the other, was unbelievable, like an incredible... I misremember. Did Miro first show up as a best man, or yeah. was he, he already been on screens before that? He was uh, Kip Sabian's best man. That was that's it. That's right. And the music was like, yeah, I'm the best man. It was just 
Did you have, was it Piff who showed up? Like, it was like there's people coming out before and being like, I'm the best man. They're like, no, 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 you're Puff. not. Puff, Puff that was yeah. it, thank you. <laughs> I don't know why I've misremembered that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just, Shane McMahon in AEW. Bobby Lashley in AEW is going to be awesome, like we said. Yeah, yeah. Shane McMahon it is. That might change. The, that might get some eyes on that product. I tell you he what, he shifted a lot of WrestleMania tickets, didn't he, Nicholas? So yeah, yeah. where's the lockbox? That's why. <laughs> the thing about the Shane McMahon, like, I'm glad that he's not going to be part of this John Moxley thing, right? That would yes. have been the wackest thing in the world. Oh, I know, boy. like. It's funny. It's objectively funny, Raw Underground, right? Comparing the two things. <laughs> but also, if I want to invest in something, I can't really, it would something I'd take the piss out of on a video. So I don't know what you do with Shane McMahon, but it's bound to be silly. It's the Jim so. Corner who said, uh, anyone who comes back out of a locked box is instantly over, or? Uh, I think it was actually, and he's, uh, Often, is he actually? Well, no, 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 let's just move on. Uh, Eri Six Man on X says, hello again, legends. Pitch your perfect WrestleMania 41, night one and night two, assuming all major players are available. Five matches per night to make it easy. Doesn't matter who wins or loses each match, uh, but just looking for the overall buzz and money your pitch can generate. Okay, I've done four rather than five okay. because uh, I can't count. Uh, uh, I've apparently. done five, but I've lost my mind towards the end. Okay, solid. Shall I do mine first? Yeah, go Mine's probably a bit more boring than yours. Um, right, so night one, I've got the main event of CM Punk and Seth Rollins. Same, yeah. Uh, so however you get to that. Night one as well, I've got Xavier Woods versus Kofi Kingston. We'll talk Ooh. about them in, a bit later in the video, Ooh, by the way. Ooh, I've got that on mine. I've got Bianca Belair versus Jade Cargill yes. on here as well. Uh, assuming that they are no longer tag team partners by this point. And I've got one for the freaks. I've got Gunther versus Ilya Dragunov oh, as well. Oh, we'll get well soon to Ilya. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, what a rubbish. Oh yeah, could he, will he even be? No, the rules, the rules like, state everyone's okay, available. All right. But uh, okay. I, I think he might unfortunately miss out this year. Magic but, sponge. Yeah. Magic sponge will get him there. At uh, night two, I've got Cody versus The Rock. In the yes. Come on, drop the title, Cody. The Dwayner is going over, baby. I've got Roman Reigns versus Jacob Fatu. Same. I got Cody Rhodes versus John Cena. Cody Rhodes working, working twice. Uh, no, I did not have him on okay. night one. I did not have him okay. on night one. Yo, know I've got him on night two. Oh, <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> what an idiot! Double duty, John. Well, I'll just rearrange the matches. It's fine. We'll pretend that didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, actually, it was Dustin Rhodes versus John Cena. Okay. There we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rhea Ripley versus Yo Sky because I think it'd be. Really oh, nice. I like yeah. that. I like that a lot. Right, let me run you through my uh, WrestleMania 41. Um, uh, similar to you on on night one, actually. Yeah. Main event, uh, yeah. CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. Uh, I've got Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill as well. Uh, Gunther is in action. Yeah. Uh, against Goldberg. Okay. Um, John Cena, of course, his farewell tour. So I thought I'd give him a nice, easy match at WrestleMania 41. Bron Break is going to kill him. Uh, um, and I've written here. I haven't really got like a proper answer to this, but I like. I just sort of plucked this out of thin air, and I quite like it. Sheamus winning the IC title, you know, big, big thing in a match where his career's on the line against someone like, I put Chad Gable down because I thought they could have a, nice. a stellar match. Nice. But yeah, anyone in there. I just like the idea of Sheamus winning the IC title. Yeah. I've also realized writing this, I've missed Drew McIntyre off, which is probably a bad idea. Let's yeah. chuck him in well, there as well. Well, you did Cody twice on the scene, yeah. did you? So. <laughs> right, night two, uh, I've got Cody Rhodes versus The Rock, of okay. course, Rock yeah. going over. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Jacob Fatu. Uh, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do, and I wanted to get all of them in this. And uh, by the way, uh, the Bianca uh, Jade thing kind of works. This one doesn't, they're all over the rosters, but it doesn't matter. Let's just say this is for a, a title, um, right? I don't know which one's Bianca and Jade is working for, but the other title is in this match Rhea Ripley versus Tiffany Stratton versus Charlotte Flair. Bloody hell. Because <laughs> I thought that's a perfect. Face heel. What are you, uh, Charlotte? It's three very strong women as well. Oh, yeah. They beat the crap out of each other. Um, and I have these are the last two matches where I just went, what do I want to see? Is it possible? I mean, he said, Eri said, um, do what you like. So, okay. Uh, I have Ray versus Dom. We've seen that before, Adam. I know, but this one, uh, it's mask and career versus, not a hair, mustache. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, Ray wins that one. Dope, yeah. And I, I wanted to get Logan Paul on the card because uh, I'm really hoping to get the uh, spot of being in the Prime Bowl next year. 
They've had different YouTubers, um, so you never know. The other ones are all knobs, so I don't think you qualify. Well, the good, the good news is uh, I've given Logan Paul an interesting opponent. It's my WrestleMania, and you've given me a, an open open book, so I've put Logan Paul versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> How's that for buzz and money? Let's go. Prime versus Broken Skull IPA. Yeah, exactly. Mix the two together and have a nice little... <laughs> I can't wait for WrestleMania next year already. Yeah, me too. Las Vegas, baby. Oh, on 420. Come on. Uh, is it on 420? Yeah, night two's 420. Wow. That's going to be chaos. <laughs> okay. That is complex. <laughs> Right, uh, there you go. That Tell us your WrestleMania card. Yeah, please do. Uh, okay, next question comes from Nerdbox. Hey. We would like to know, will we see the New Day breakup? Culminating, cul ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba culminating in a match at WrestleMania where they reunite with Big E. Yeah, so I obviously put Xavier versus Kofi on my night one card here. Uh, I think that this isn't going to be a conventional breakup. I don't think they're going to be permanent rivals or anything like that. I think it would be like just it would be personally upsetting if the new day broke up altogether. Yeah. I think they're just gonna it's gonna be a little tiff that they need to get out of their system. I do think it will culminate at WrestleMania where afterwards they will all hug make up and Big E will be there and it'll be great. I love this story. Me and Hamflet have been have been talking a lot about it on the Raw Reviews recently. Um and I'm really scared if I'm honest. I feel a little bit ill for the 10 year celebration for the new day because Xavier Woods is spiraling brilliantly and Kofi's just trying to do the right thing as his mate and it's just never really working out for him. Um, you know, this this all depends on obviously the situation with Big E, which we always talk about and we always wish him well. And fingers crossed one day he will eventually return to the ring, but only if he's medically cleared, of course, and, and if he wants to. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to see it or not. I don't know. Like... I don't want them to just be like, go all this way and then not do it. But I also like the fact that the new, new days never split, but I'm fascinated by it. Um, and I, I wouldn't argue against a WrestleMania match between the two of them. Yeah, yeah, just to see it would be fun, yeah. if nothing else. But yeah, it doesn't need to be a permanent, like we hate each other thing forever. Just get out of your system, get this little rivalry out of your system. Either that or you resolve it and Xavier wins a mid, like US title or whatever sure. at WrestleMania would be a, yeah, a lovely moment for him of never having won a singles title. There you go. Uh, right, let's move on. Because um, Jamie's asked a great question. Thank you to uh, Vanders1980. He says, hello, gentlemen. You've just started a new promotion. Mm. What 10 wrestlers would you take from the rosters in WWE, AW, NXT, TNA, New Japan, etc., to be the foundation of your promotion? A max of three wrestlers per promotion. I've actually got a pen and paper here. Oh. I, otherwise, I know I'm going to just completely screw this up. Tony Khan over here with but the notes. You get, you get first pick, I think. Okay. Uh, all right, are we okay. Right, I've got Brian Danielson from first a, one for you from AEW. Yeah, perfect. I my first one also comes from AEW, and it's probably not who you'd expect. It's the Outrunners. That's right. If you're building a new promotion, <laughs> yes. that is who I am putting first on my list. Fair. Uh, okay. You can try to get by, but you'll get dealt with in the trap. I think we're going to have very different Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. Which is good. Uh, my second one was, uh, uh, so I'm just going to do the AEW ones all in a row, was Jamie Hayter. Okay. From AEW. Oh, I... Yeah. Good. I will go, if it seems he's not been picked there, I will also go uh, AEW, and I will go Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Okay. Uh, I've got Konosuke Takeshita from AEW, and that's my free AEW. He was a good. He was, a, he was the one I had in the reserve. I love, I think Takeshita's going to have a great few months going forward now. Yeah. He's, good. he's pretty good. Really? Right? Yeah, here's a tip. Here's one to watch. He's not bad. He's all right, that guy. <sighs> right. i got to pick mine now to, to see if... I didn't know we were doing a draft. I've just named guys. Uh, yeah, okay. Like, I've got 10 names. That's it. Okay. <laughs> like, right. I don't have any alts. <laughs> I will pick <laughs> next... I want for my roster. I love this guy. I love, he's honestly, got like 40 names. <laughs> Jamie, you've inspired us in the office. Like, we want to do this a proper version. We're going to do this draft. over Christmas. We're going to do a proper, big, just fun video. Be cool. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm going to go. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> Come on, we're recording a horror video. I've got Beast, Beast Mortos. There we go, right? There Beast, the Beast, Beast Mortos. Mortos. Okay, I've got Cody Rhodes. Okay, right. I'll make the rule that I can't have 
someone that you've okay, got. Okay, sounds good. Okay, you're going Cody, I'll go the Punker then. CM Punk for me, please. All right, I've got Roman Reigns. Son of a bitch, Sorry, he was Chief. next. My, yep, I knew you'd have I will go Rhea Ripley then. Okay, in I've that got, case. I've got, I don't even know if this counts because she's not in WWE at the moment, but I've got Becky Lynch. Oh yeah, we can, we, can, we can do a right, after the online stupid discourse, we can do a rights to ginger hair match between <laughs> her, her and uh, Jamie here. Because only one of them can have the same hair colour. I will have, I'm changing my, can I change the Beast Motos actually? I need more women nope. on this roster. I'm having Willow Nightingale. Okay. I'm having Willow. So and you've then, got a pick now as well. I've also got a pick uh, and I will pick, uh, no, he's in NXT. I will pick Jacob Fatu. Okay, I'm going. Um, I'm going nerdy now, and I'm having Miyu Yamashita from Tokyo Joshi Pro. Right, I'll go uh, NXT because technically he said WWE and then NXT, so yep. that counts. Sure, Tony D'Angelo put him down. Close. The man who just dropped the title to Tony D, I'm ah, going over Femi. Nice I one. think he's going to be a mega star. All right, uh, Tam Nakano from Stardom, please. Okay, I didn't pick Will Ospreay. Oh no. I forgot about Will Ospreay. Oh, no. Son of a bitch. Um, pick the next best, next best wrestler then. Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, good oh. point. Tony okay. D'Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> what are we up to now? What's that? Seven we've got so I've far? Got, I've got eight so far, Chief. What uh, have you done? Oh, son of a bitch. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, eight. Okay, I, I've got two from New Japan to close. I've got Zack Sabre Jr. So he can reprise the 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 long term feud with his Twitter password. <laughs> Five years and running. I will have a bit, a bit of potential for the future. I will have Thea Hale from Chase You, please. Okay, she's the most annoying wrestler on the planet. <laughs> you don't so like you it, are it. more than welcome to have her. Uh, my last one is uh, Vanity Pick. It's Tommy Hiroishi, my mm. favorite wrestler of all time. There you go. And my last one is a toss up. I love you, Joe Hendry, but uh, I need more women on my roster, so I'll have Jordan Grace. Thank you very much. Nice one. Let us know your fantasy That's roster of 10 wrestlers or 50 in Adam's case. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just happy I managed to keep, keep it on the right <laughs> on the right track with the rosters. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> he's, he's, he's more of a like, this is, this is like the core of the company. He's more of a legend who pops he's in and out. Good wrestlers as well. Hey, yeah, careful. So. You can have The Rock versus Tony D'Angelo, man. What were oh, you thinking? That's the dream in it one day. Our next question comes from Michael Morris, who would like to know... I forgot about Bron Breaker, son of a bitch. <laughs> Goldberg, where was he? Bald legend. Uh, with Netflix cancelling shows at the drop of a hat, do you think there will ever be a case of them just ending their partnership <laughs> with WWE? It hasn't even started yet. We're talking Come on, about po positivity. It. Second part of uh, Michael's question is, uh, if not Rhea, who can you see beating Liv for the title? Ooh. So the Netflix WWE deal is not at, not really a ten year deal like it's been you know presented as it's a five year deal and Netflix have the option after five years to continue or stop. So yeah, they they have the power to do that. Their own. Um, are you still watching? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Basically, um, so they do have the power to do that. Um, it, whether we can't really give an informed opinion on whether or not they actually would do that because we will never see the viewership numbers and we will never see if it's worthwhile to them to continue doing so the answer in short is yes after five years they have the option yeah. to do that uh, if not Rhea who beats Liv uh, just give it to EO Sky she's a better wrestler than Liv Morgan yeah um uh, yeah, I think they, with Netflix, yeah, for the foreseeable future, like you say, even past the first five years, I don't see them having an issue with this. I think the, the relationship works so well. We're very lucky in the UK that uh, from the start of January, we get everything, basically. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and PLEs all on the network. You and I were talking off air about what happens to the, the sort of archive. Yeah. Fingers crossed we get that on there as well, because um, I think that would be useful sort of drawing in old viewers. Be, oh, I'd love to go back and watch this yeah. pay-per-view from back in the day. I know it's only like, maybe like 1% of WWE subscri network subscribers watch this stuff, but I do, so yeah. give me Jim Crockett, please. Every lunchtime I will look over and Hamlet will be watching some random bollocks from back yeah. in. Even bad stuff. He started like re-watching like 2006 WWE. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, like he'll just watch the Berserker and stuff as yeah. well. Like he loves it, man. He's like, uh, but yeah, I, I don't see Netflix just suddenly deciding, nah, spin this off. Yeah, uh, one weekend, man. Yeah, I think. Wrestling I think, stuff's not for us. They've got money to burn as well, Netflix. They're just making, and this is just, I think it's going to be a real, real benefit for them, for yeah. both companies, really. Uh, who takes the title off 
live if not Rhea? There is a version of events I see where despite all the teasing, Tiffany Stratton suddenly shows up and cashes in. Mm. I, would, I just okay. want a world title round out waste before the end of the year, yeah. basically. So what, however we need to get there. Whatever breaks the Dominic Mysterio storyline I'm <laughs> here for, I think. Jeez, get me out of this hell. Uh, Ashley Clements <laughs> brings us our next question. Thank you, Ashley. Um, is there a wrestler that you miss seeing on your screens? For Ashley, it's Keith Lee. Yeah. Absolutely. Hope he's doing well. Know of his prior health problems. Yeah. Get well soon to Keith Lee. Uh, P.S. I get to see if she's uh, cleared Thunder Rosa's first back match from injury next week at Riot Cabaret against Nina Samuels. Great to see Thunder Rosa back. In yeah, way. good stuff. Like, she comes back and she gets hurt. It's just, it's cruel. It's a yeah. cruel sport. Uh, Eddie Kingston for me like I know it's kind of a default answer for me on, on, on wrestling questions but um, he's been gone what four or five months or something now it feels like three years like yeah. he, he brings a levity and a authenticity to AW programming um, he's one of the best promos in the game I think he's one of the best wrestlers around I love Eddie Kingston I miss him dearly he's a good guy as well Bring him, bring him home. I'm going to book him against the Beast Mortos if I get to expand my roster. Hey, that would probably be really good. Awesome, wouldn't <laughs> so, it? Yeah, I miss Eddie, man. Uh, really? Can I have three, please? You can have as many Technically as Technically four, but I'm going to go... Get your list back, come on. <laughs> uh, obviously, I say it every time I get asked this question. Big E. I yes. miss you so yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, lovely bloke and uh, yeah, just, just an awful series of events. A bit like with, with Keith Lee, as we, as we mentioned there. I feel people are going to think I'm doing a gimmick, but I genuinely think right now with the women's tag team division being as it is in WWE, the Iconics. I knew it. <laughs> like, I know, I know, yeah, 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 but genuinely, wouldn't it be better with them in it? Well, they're an actual team as well. And, yes, you know, it works so well as yeah. a duo. Why would you, like, why, if you're a WWE, why would you get rid of them? Yeah. Like, even if they're just doing a two minute back, backstage segment where you, you go to journalism, yeah, all yeah, that they stuff. They don't have to wrestle just, every week, yeah. Yeah, keep them, keep them. Um, and uh, Ricky Starks, please come back to the screen soon. Yeah, this situation sucks so much What's ass. Going on? Like, yeah, come on. Sort it out, lads. Or all let him go. Either or, I don't care. Yeah. Either, either let him go to WWE, which is where we all anticipate he probably is heading anyway, or get him back on telly. Uh, you know, you sort the thing with Daniel Garcia now. Ricky Starks should be next on that list. Yeah, I totally agree. Who's next? Is it me? It's you. I last agree. one, isn't it? All right, yeah. Last one. This is from Thomas Leon, who would like to know. Hello, gents. Hello. <laughs> what would be the most ridiculous let's break the internet way to book Goldberg? I'm thinking he beats Gunther in three minutes, destroys the new Wyatt family, and drops the title to Logan Paul. This sounds like, Thomas, this sounds like hell. I, <laughs> that's you, your word, that is a nightmare for you, isn't you, it? You are cr committing human crimes with this tweet. Yeah. What, what are you going for? I mean, break the internet is Goldberg beats Cody Rhodes for the title. Yeah, yeah that'd, be, that'd be quite funny. Or you run by Goldberg versus The Rock. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. you, want to, you want to really generate some headlines, have him fight his own son. There you go. <laughs> G versus G. Yeah, he's looked big. He did. He's, he looked uh, very different from where he, where he looked before. Yeah, it's wild. It's like uh, kids grow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goldberg, anything you do with Goldberg is going to piss somebody off. So you might as well piss everybody off. Uh, what are your opinions, sorry, quickly, on street trash as tag team champions? JD McDonough. That, 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 those, those weaselly bastards. I, You're not a fan, I assume. Um, no, so I like the act. Okay. I could do without JD McDonough's okay. existence Fair. in professional wrestling in 2024. For okay, so for, for this for this uh, scenario, let's have JD McDonough because he's a perfect weaselly little twat alongside Dominic Mysterio. Those are the two representatives holding the belts for uh, Street Trash going into WrestleMania where they face a new tag team, Andy Murray, and that's Goldberg and Bron Breaker. Oh gosh. So <laughs> let's go with that one. You know, an actual productive way. That's good. Like, that'll be fun. But also, you could do Braun Breaker versus Goldberg one on one and have Braun beat him in two minutes. That'd be good. Braun Spears Gage in the build. Oh that'd my good. god. That'd be good. Or you could do Goldberg, where Goldberg and Goldberg. Goldberg Taker again, that'd break the internet. <laughs> it would probably break a few bones as well, maybe. <laughs> Jesus. Right. Final question today comes from Jimmy Crackhorn, who says uh, Jimmy Crackhorn? Yeah. <laughs> Who is your wrestler of the year and what is your match of the year so far? Good, good grief. Uh, okay, wrestler of the year is Brian Danielson. Yeah. I think that his his in-ring resume speaks for itself and I think that his creative has been very, very good throughout the year. What a moment at All In as I well. Know. Like he finally, somebody finally said, hey, 
You. You're going to be world champion. Stop refusing. It's you yeah, I'm now. Forcing this belt yeah. onto you. Yeah. He's so selfish. You can retire afterwards. How about that? And I'm into the Moxley stuff. It's yeah. really helped revive Moxley a lot as well, um, which is good. Match of the year. Uh, so I'm stuck between two matches. Uh, I have the Sting retirement match, which I oh, thought was a perfect. Got that was this year. A perfect cluster. F U C K. Mm -hmm. uh, just what what a crazy over the top joyous extravaganza of uh, blood and guts and and suns <laughs> showing up and stuff. <laughs> uh, and I also have a nerd pick uh, that being uh, Takashi Sugera versus Masa Kitamiya yeah. from Noah. They, it was like nine minutes long, and all they did was like really punch each other in the face. My kind of my kind of <laughs> wrestling match. What do you have? Uh, yeah, Danielson's up there for me. Osprey as well, um, but I, I'm I'm always more WWE leaning, so I'll go Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's been a brilliant year for him, and, and, and like we said at the beginning, the fact that he's managed to maintain the momentum. I mean, what a year he's had in terms of just like wins the Rumble and then goes. Sorry, I'm not I'm not facing Roman after everything that we've done. So uh, I, I mean, that documentary is just a fascinating watch, isn't it? And that's that's barely scratching the surface, if we're honest. Yeah. Um, in terms of match of the year, uh, you know, you can have your matches that you like. Your Osprey Danielsons, uh, Osprey Swerve, uh, 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 Osprey Swerve, uh, Danielson Swerve. It was a, a, a genuine honour to be in attendance for. Um, also, recency bias. I really, really enjoyed and have gone back and watched now twice. Hell in a Cell, CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre, but there's a very simple answer to this, and that's Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns, <laughs> night two of WrestleMania, because look at all the people that showed up in that match, including the best wrestler in the world, and the man I should have, should have signed for my promotion first out the gate, The Rock. And by the way, <laughs> the best match of next year is going to be The Rock versus Cody Rhodes. I've already called it, and the best wrestler of the year, is The Rock. I hope The Rock brings his title for that match. <gasps> title for title, yes! It's, it's really important that you know it's a real title. You I mean, love that title, don't you, Nicholas? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let us know your thoughts on everything we've discussed. Let us know your answers. And uh, if you want to send us more questions, you can do so on social media, of course. Um, but for now, like, share, subscribe, and check out this video right here. We'll see you soon. Ooh.